Hello, I would like to talk to you today about a particular aspect of poetic inquiry. Poetic inquiry itself is an interesting subdivision of arts-based research and poetic inquirers tend to love to use poetry at all stages of the research process, which is certainly possible. But I'm going to talk to you about a particular type of poetic analysis. So this is doing analytic work with text-based data, such as interview transcripts or focus group transcripts, or possibly secondary documentary data, such as media articles and so on. This begins with I poems, which you may have heard of. They are based on Carol Gilligan's Listening Guide, which is a form of narrative analysis involving deep listening. And Susie Weller and Rosalind Edwards from the University of Southampton wrote an article about I poems in, I think, 2012, uh, which increased their popularity. And essentially, how you construct an I poem is, let's say you have an interview transcript, you would pull out each statement which either begins with I or has I prominently within it and put each statement on a new line to construct a form of poem. It's another way of slicing the data, of pulling out, extracting systematically particular parts of the data to see what that can tell us in its reformed shape. It sounds straightforward. It's not as easy as you might think because there are always decisions to be made. For example, if a long statement starts with I, do you include the whole statement or just part of it? If just part, where do you stop? If somebody being interviewed stammers and just says I, 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 uh, and then stops and then the interviewer says something else, do you include that or do you leave it out? You would put the statements in the same order as they appear in the interview. But other than that, there are these decisions to take which can make it a bit more complicated and head scratchy uh, than it might seem when I first described it. It's not only I poems though, there might be scope for using we poems if you interview two people at a time. That can be called pair interviewing or couple interviewing or dyad interviewing or joint interviewing because the terminology in this field is still um, very movable. But you can see how if you were interviewing two people, perhaps people who were in a, a personal relationship or people who work together as colleagues or for whatever reason you're interviewing them together, they might say we quite a lot and then you might get those we statements out to make a we poem. Or a they poem, perhaps in an interview or, or from a focus group transcript. People in a focus group might talk about they, if they're perhaps employees in an organisation, they might mean the people with the power. Um, or if they're talking about something political, they might mean politicians and so on. A they poem might be useful. And this approach has been expanded further by researchers such as Rachel Chadwick into pronoun poems, where they use all of these plus he, she, you and it, all in the same way of slicing the data. The pronoun poems is a very new approach. There's only around 20 hits on Google Scholar for pronoun poems at the time of recording. But these approaches can provide really useful insights. Poetic work is very unlikely to be your only analytic approach, but it can be a really helpful adjunct to other forms of analysis, such as thematic analysis or narrative analysis. Also, it's quite fun, so maybe have a go.